In this video, we're going to show you how to connect the Software Toolbox OPC Data Logger to a Siemens S7 1500 PLC via OPC UA. So let's get to what you'll need to get started, and then we'll do the configuration. First thing you're going to need is the IP address of your S7 1500 PLC. Uh, your OPC UA server will have to be activated in the PLC via TIA portal. And of course, you'll need our OPC Data Logger application installed which you can download from the link shown here. You'll need to know the OPC UA endpoint for your S7 1500. Most likely, it's what you see below on the screen with the uh, example where you would replace the example IP address I've used of 192.168.111.198 with your IP address. The port number 4844 is the default for the S7 1500. So unless someone has changed this in your PLC, this should work. The other thing is, in the S7, any data box that you want to read must be set as accessible from UA server in the TIA portal software. This is a TIA portal 15 example, just showing you where you activate the OPC UA server. You go into the PLC, device configuration, you see the CPU is shown here under OPC UA, general, there's a checkbox here for activate the OPC UA server. Uh, other versions of TI portal, this might be slightly different, but if it's activated, you may be in good shape, but it will depend on whether someone has uh, made those data box available via UA. We'll know that or you will know that when you try this, if you browse the UA server and you don't get any uh, of your data box that you want, that is a strong hint that you need to go back and set them as available in the TIA portal. We don't have a magic way to do that from our software. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to drag in the OPC data logger. Now out of the box when you run it, it starts our wizard, so I'm going to restart the wizard here. And we're just going to go through the wizard configuration. The first thing we'll need to do is configure our logging task. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at the default. I like to do uh, demonstrations with as little as possible change from default. And then I'm going to pick OPC UA as shown here. And I'll go ahead and rename the collector S71500 PLC uh, as a friendly name. And then I'll just put in that OPC UA endpoint. I happen to have that available here, and you notice as soon as I hit tab or refresh, it automatically set the security to auto select. I recommend you just try this to start with and don't turn on any user authentication. Now if you happen to know these things are configured like user authentication in your PLC because you configured it, well then you may need to use the user authentication. Again, we're trying to just keep this simple in our test PLC in our lab. So then now that it's net done, that is done, we need to add the items we want to uh, log. So we can call them, uh, we'll just create a logging group. We create a group, and then we decide how we want to read that data. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the default. What we'll do is subscribe to the data, and uh, we will tell the UA server to pull the data points at 250 milliseconds and only send us changes. That's what a subscription is about. You can read more about the other methods when you're in the software by following the link as shown here. Let's go ahead and manually browse for some items. So in the browse, I click Browse for Items to Add. And you notice it connected to my UA server. And I click on the plus sign. Now sometimes this can take a few seconds to, to get going. But you'll see that there's a variety of things already available. Um, you may, in fact, be able to grab some of the things like some of the timers or the serial number, some of the built-in things in the PLC, or some of the server capabilities, or the vendor server info. Uh, that's not available in ours. Um, but you may be able to see some of these tags right away. If so, that's a great way to test. In our case, um, we have some data blocks that uh, we, we built in here that we have exposed in a sample application that we have here. So just give me a minute to access my list of tags. And in my combustion calculation, 
I'm going to grab my, um, let's see, my fuel temperature in Celsius. I'm going to grab my oxidant temperature. I'm just holding control click. And I'm going to grab my oxygen in air. So I have three tags selected. I'm going to click Add Selected, and they're added to a list. Now there's also, let's see if I can find it here, there is a server current time tag that's built in to every server, but I'm not sure where that is. So we're not going to worry about that in this demo. So you see I have three tags selected over here, and they're ready to be added. So I'm just going to click OK, and you notice automatically Data Auger adds those. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now I just need to define how I want to store it. So I'm going to do a text file and I'm going to call this uh, text file combustion data. Then I'm going to define how I want to log the data. We have a couple of formats as you see here. You can read more about those. I'll pick table. I'm just going to leave this at the default. And what this is going to do is log one row per sample with the tags in the columns. And this automatically sets up some mappings. I'm not going to change any of these. Again, this is about getting you going quickly. I'm going to change my file location over here to a location on my local PC. Okay. So I have this location set up. If you want to be able to look at the file while it's logging, then you need to tick this box. Um, I'm just, again, going to leave everything at the defaults. Oops, actually, you know what? I do have to give this a file name. And I'm going to call this uh, data logging demo onetxt Sorry, I forgot about that. That's kind of important. OK, so now that I'm done with that, I'm done configuring. You can see I have my whole project stored here. So now I'm going to execute what's called a test run. So what I'll do is I'll get my configuration saved. So I'm choosing to save this configuration in uh, my little data logger logs file. Hundred. Okay, and now I'm going to do a test run. What a test run will do is attempt to do all the logging. Um, for a period of time up to uh, about five minutes and then uh, we won't actually run it that long. We'll run it for a few seconds and then we will uh, get go ahead and uh, look, have a look at the data. Um, you can read more about these acknowledgments. I'm just going to confirm all. These are things to basically tell you we're going to connect to your device, we're going to read data, we're going to write data to, to the disk. I want you to know that. And so it's running doing some logging. It's opened my file. You can see it down here. I'm watching over on uh, the other screen. I'm just going to let this run for a few seconds here. Okay, so we've let that run for a while. I'm going to go ahead and stop my test. And then I'm going to bring over my folder. Let's have a look at my uh, data file. And you'll see that one of the values did in fact change during those few seconds I was running. So there you have it. Uh, you'll see it's got the timestamp and the tags and uh, in the column. And it looks like there was one data change during that time. You can see the three values that it picked up. So that's really all there is to it to get the OPC data logger going with the S7-1500.